Hi class, as promised, I wanted to do a brief video lecture on how to analyze advertisements since this is something you'll be doing for your very first essay, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at three different products with three different taglines or slogans. I'm going to go through each one and explain how they are demonstrating the use of weasel words or a similar claim and just kind of break them down for you. The first one I want to look at is the L'Oreal Paris ad. Here you'll see their tagline is, because you're worth it. This is an example of an unfinished claim, because you're worth what? It's not really stating exactly what um, the intended audience, uh, in this case primarily women, would be worth. It's also attempting to compliment the viewer by implying that um, the viewer must be worth something if she or he would use these types of products. So, you know, it's, it's catering to those two ends. The second ad I want to take a look at is the Prilosec ad. You can see it says, help stop heartburn before it stops you. Now, you might have seen this ad before, <clears throat> and if you have read through uh, Jeffrey Schrank's um, ideas about weasel words, you'll know that this is a pretty typical case of a weasel claim. That word help is being used to send a message that, in fact, Prilosec can stop heartburn, but there's no guarantee. It's just helping to stop it. It's not promising to deliver anything. It's just stating that it may or may not work. It's just going to help in that case. The last thing I want to look at, this Stouffer's ad, doesn't necessarily play into these ideas of Weasel words, but I think that Stouffer's is doing something interesting, and I wanted to discuss what they're doing in this ad. The claim that they have here uh, states, let's fix dinner. Now, there's a double entendre in this claim. You can take this to mean the literal, let's fix dinner, as in let's make dinner. This is sort of a colloquialism. Uh, many people use this term to talk about actually sitting down to make dinner. And so what Stouffer's is saying here is that one could, you know, use a Stouffer's product in order to help that person make dinner. The other claim that's being implied here uh, is the use of the word fix as in to repair. So it's, make, it's kind of making the reader think that there's something wrong with dinner. And if you had seen this particular campaign that Stouffer's uh, ran a few years back, you would have seen images of families who were running around, um, not being able to sit down at the table and have that time to connect. So it was catering to that type of audience, families who really wanted that quality time. So here, this idea of let's fix dinner, uh, Stouffer's is saying that, hey, we can help you to make dinner a more family-oriented uh, atmosphere. So it's playing to both ends. So those are the interesting things that these weasel claims can do. <clears throat> The next thing I want to take a look at, it has to do with ideas based upon color theory. Here we have a product, and I don't know if you can see it very well, but this is for Sambuca. Uh, this is a particular type of alcohol. And in the background, you'll note that there is flames. There's a lot of negative space being used that those flames occupy with this kind of interesting font that says white hot. So what kinds of uh, emotions does this color use kind of play up for you? When you look at this, um, Sambuca kind of has this sort of edgy, almost sexy feel because of the use of these reds and this, this flaming imagery. Um, what Sambuca and the marketers here are trying to do is to send the message that this product is probably geared towards an audience that is younger, hipper, somebody who wants to have fun, wants a little bit of excitement or daring in his or her life, and, and they're really trying to cater to that. Sambuca generally... Um, you know, if I were with you guys, I'd, I'd ask you to tell me how many of you have heard of this, this type of alcohol. Most people generally haven't heard of it. In fact, in my experience, Sambuca is something that older gentlemen tend to drink. So I think this was an attempt by this advertiser to cater to a different audience than the normal drinkers of Sambuca. So it's something interesting. It shows you how color can be used to reach a new audience and deliver a certain type of message. Let's go on here. Um, the next thing I want to look at is another particular advertisement and the use of the color blue. Color theory, you know, as you read, and again, you've only read a little bit about color theory, just kind of touching on the general principles, but there's a lot that can be said just in the use of color in an advertisement. In this ad for Sears, we have this slogan, your daydream is our day job, and there are all different shades of blue that pervade this particular advertisement. So I want to ask you, how do you feel when you look at this ad? Many of you might kind of comment that it's, it gives a calming effect when you look at the uh, you know, Sears employee who is standing there with a very welcoming posture in his blue shirt, again tying into this color of blue. You feel like you can put total trust and confidence you know, in this particular um, marketer or merchandise brand. 
you know, if you were to go to Sears and try to make one of your daydreams come true, in this case, the purchase of an expensive appliance, you can trust that Sears is there to help you. Um, blue suggests things like confidence, calm, as I said earlier. It also appeals to our intellectual side. So you know that if you are, um, you know, going to use this type of product or go to this particular brand, that you can trust what they're offering. They're going to do the job, deliver it as promised. So those messages are all being sent with this use of color. And the last thing I would like to look at today, just briefly, ties into this idea that Jean Kilborn presented in her brief essay, Jesus is a Brand of Jeans. For those of you that read it, you probably came to understand that Kilborn is trying to express how marketing techniques nowadays um, prey upon people's sort of ideas of commitment and dependency and attachment. So what we find happening in our advertisement is that a lot of marketers know that people are dependent upon certain products. They rely on them. And so they give these products or these brands sort of human-like attributes uh, in order to make people more interested or, you know, that people think, okay, I can, I can trust, you know, my Levi's jeans more than I could trust, you know, my best friend or my partner or my sister or my parents or whomever because people let us down, but products don't have to. And so we've been kind of trained, you know, I can fill this emotional void, this, um, this kind of longing for an intimacy with another person with a connection to a product. I mean, you guys have probably experienced this. You have different kinds of smartphones. People get very excited when new ones are released. So all of this kind of goes hand in hand. Here we have this, uh, this idea, all I need is all I got. And you see this woman by herself running through a field carefree in nothing but her Levi's jeans. So what message is this sending? People kind of scratch their heads when they look at this one. But you can tell, again, this message, this idea that Kilburn is talking about is pervading this advertisement as well. You know, why is this woman in only her Levi's? Well, it's showing that she really depends on these. These, these jeans are doing something for her on an emotional or kind of like an intimate level that, you know, she really needs them. They're important to her. They, they rank pretty high in her life. Now, it might seem silly. You might be thinking, well, no one is, is so enamored with their jeans that they would do this. But... You know, it's sending a message, it's sending this idea that, hey, you could have this carefree lifestyle, you could be comfortable, these jeans would be kind of the answers that you were looking for in terms of your comfort, maybe your image, whatever, but all of these things are happening subconsciously. So, again, the images that I've gathered for you today are just a taste of what you might find when you begin doing your own analyses of the various articles, or sorry, advertisements, based upon the information from the articles that I've sent you. So this is what I want you to work on while I'm gone um, in terms of getting prepared to start writing your rough draft for your ad analysis essay. I want you to pick again two or three, two might be a better number, print advertisements that you can sit down and start to pick apart like this and say, okay, what is the message here? Who is the audience? How are colors being used? How are these slogans being used? I mean, what am I supposed to be taking away? What am I maybe taking away that's not overt? What don't I realize is happening in each one of these advertisements? So those are the things I want you to explore. Please go through the folder I've set up that details what we have to do while I'm absent and between now and Monday. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me via phone. I'd be happy to answer any questions, and I hope you guys are having a great time back in PA. I will see you soon. Bye.